This is Wednesday, June 2nd, 2021, and we've gathered to offer evening prayer, right to, on the occasion of commemorating Blandina and her companions, the Martyrs of Lyon. And we begin on page 115 in the Book of Common Prayer, but first, let's take a few moments to quiet our hearts and center our minds. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. On page 116, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Invitatorian Psalter on page 117. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Let's pray together the hymn, O Gracious Light, on page 118. <clears throat> o gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The psalm appointed for this evening is, is Psalm 126, beginning on page 782 in the Book of Common Prayer. That's Psalm 126 on page 782. And together. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord like the water courses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. 
he came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time to them and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour is come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hand of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. As I mentioned, today is the observance of Blandina and her companions, the martyrs of Lyon. What is fascinating is that um, there's very little written about this situation unless you look up one of the bishops who was um, one of the martyrs at Lyon. And then in your book, um, uh, Butler's Lives of the Saints, you have four pages about him and everything that happened. But as far as the woman, she gets a half a page. I just wanted to point that out. Um, so <laughs> sexism reigns supreme, I guess. Um, what is fascinating here is about this early Christian persecution that started in 177 under the Emperor Marcus Aurelius. Um, and I want you to listen carefully to how similar this persecution um, fits with the Jews in Germany in the 30s, 1930s. And it reminds me of the subtleties of persecution. At Lyon and Vienne in Gaul, there were missionary centers which had drawn many Christians from Asia and Greece. And persecution began in the year 177. At first, Christians were excluded from the public baths and then excluded from the marketplace and then from social and public life. Then they were subject to attack when they appeared in public. And then many Christian homes were vandalized. At this point, the government became involved and began to take Christians into custody for questioning. Some slaves from Christian households were tortured to obtain confessions and were induced to say that Christians practice cannibalism and incest. These charges were used to arouse the whole city against the Christians particularly against Pontinius, the aged bishop of Lyon, along with 47 others, including Sanctus, a deacon, a talus, a maturus, a recent convert, and Blandina, a slave. Pontinus was beaten and then released to die of his wounds a few days later. Sanctus was tormented with red hot irons. Blandina, tortured all day long, would say nothing except, I am a Christian and nothing vile is done among us. She was defending about cannibalism and incest. She was initially exposed, hung naked on a stake to be the food of the beasts in the arena, but none of the beasts would attack her. Matter of fact, they sat down and just stared at her. And so she was brought back inside again to the prison before being cast in a net in front of a group of bulls. And that was the end of her. Finally, the rest of the uh, those who had survived of that time were all put to death in the public arena. You see the common thread here with how subtle that persecution began. First being excluded, then a little bit more, and then a little bit more, and a little bit more. 
and then the lies start about them. It is fascinating that in Christian history, uh, especially in the Roman Empire, that it was rumored that Christians were practicing cannibalism, that we were sacrificing babies and then eating their flesh and drinking their blood. That was the understanding of the Eucharist. And so as uh, time went on and eventually the church was allowed to at least meet in homes, um, it was required that the doors to the homes be kept wide open so that passerbys could look in and make sure that we weren't killing any babies um, and uh, doing cannibalistic acts, et cetera. And eventually we moved on from that. What I find fascinating is in the write-up in my other book where it talks all about Pontinus, um, we have his actual writings, and I'm just going to touch on a couple because he was writing to um, some of his colleagues um, in the churches in Asia and Phrygia. And um, I just lost my place here on the page. Hold on one second. Um, doo -doo -doo. He says, it is impossible to convey to you in words or in writing the magnitude of the tribulation, the fury of the heathen against the saints, and all that the blessed martyrs are enduring. The persecution began unofficially with social ostracism. We were excluded from houses, from the baths, and from the market. And with popular violence, stoning, plundering, blows, insults, and everything that an infuriated crowd loves to do to those it hates. And then it was taken up officially. It became policy now to persecute. And he goes on about the unfair treatment to which they were all subjected by the judges in the courts and so on and beaten. He says, as the governor had given orders to let none of us escape, Certain pagan uh, servants of ours were also arrested. These slaves, afraid lest they might have to undergo the tortures they saw inflicted on the saints, um, accused us of feeding on human flesh and so on. But this writing goes on and on in great detail about the utter depravity of those who were inflicting these wounds, inhumane treatment. It's a reminder to us to always be vigilant, to stand up for those who often do not have anyone to stand up for them. In this case, it was Christians being persecuted, but throughout history, it has been pretty much every different religion. We always need to make sure that we are not a part of it. We need to echo the words of Blandina, who said, I am a Christian, and nothing vile is done among us. We will do nothing vile either. And so we give thanks for the witness of these martyrs. As our psalm said, those who sow in tears will reap with joy, because eventually, as you well know, the entire empire converted to the good news of God in Christ. Thanks be to God. Let's continue with the Song of Simeon on page 120, the Nunc Dimittis, and we'll pray that together in unison. <coughs> Excuse me. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue now with the prayers on 121. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue with suffrage A, the full suffrage A, on page 121. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. We now offer the following collects, the collect of the day. Almighty God, who gave such courage and endurance to Blandina and her companions, that by their deaths many hearts were turned to you, grant that we, in accordance with their example, may also gladly endure all that is required of us as we witness to you in our own day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's offer together the Colic for Peace on page 123. Most Holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on the doing of your will, and that we, being delivered from the fear of all enemies, may live in peace and quietness through the mercies of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. And on page 124, a collect for the presence of Christ. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. And also on page 124, together the collect for mission. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night. And give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. And another collect for mission, and on page 125, together. O God, you manifest in your servants the signs of your presence. Send forth upon us the spirit of love, that in companionship with one another, your abounding grace may increase among us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite you to unmute yourselves and offer prayers of intercession and thanksgiving, either silently or aloud. We remember especially Mary's son, Mark, and have healing prayers on his behalf, and comfort prayers and peace prayers for Mary. Thank you, Mary. Hello. Thank you.
Emerson and Patrick. Kathy. Travel for Brit. Safe travel for Brit. For Courtney's family. For Megan. Art. Tessa. Mm -hmm. For Marilyn. For Sybil. Mary and her family. For Stella. Gratitude for Caroline. For Suzanne. For Pat Y. Grat gratitude for safe travel for my daughter today. Amen. Mm -hmm. Gratitude that soon we will be able to worship together in person. Yes. Amen. 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 Minimal, minimal restrictions. We remember the unemployed, the homeless, and those who have lost hope. Amen. All prisoners and orphans, the widowed, the lonely, those who live alone. The Palestinians and the Jews, that they may get along. Mm -hmm. right. Process. We pray for the teenagers who are suffering from mental illness. For our school teachers and leaders. And for our country. For Dina. Almighty God, you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Please join with me in praying the general thanksgiving on page 125. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.